Let's take a look at extended essays in physics. So I've seen extended essays be 40 plus hours of complete drudgery for students, but I've also seen extended essays be the very best high school educational experience that they had. And I'd like to steer you in the direction of the latter possibility. Now, why would you do an extended essay in physics? The grades do tend to be a little lower than in other topics, although recently I've had a few uh, A papers, and in the past I've had pa papers that I thought were even better than these, and they didn't receive an A. I do think it's getting a little easier to get an A. And the second warning is, of course, most of the extended essay topics are, are based on experimental work, and just by its very nature, experimental work can be very, very frustrating. All kinds of problems can occur. On the other hand, uh, this process of finding out things on your own, it's very, very addictive. And that's what real science is all about. So if you can kind of get that addiction right now, it will give you tremendous momentum as you go forward in your career in, say, engineering or research. There's five basic types of extended essay, experimental survey, database, theoretical, or a combination of them. And I would think most of them would be some combination of the other four. So a couple of examples of experimental topics, uh, looking at how the speed of sound changes as a function of temperature, or looking at the variation resistance of a wire subject to different strains. Data-based essay would be when you're using somebody else's data and analyzing it and interpreting it. An example of that would be somebody who is using data from the worldwide telescope. A theoretical essay. Uh, for most students, I would try to stay clear of a purely theoretical essay. Uh, it's just very difficult to establish the an appropriate level of difficulty. Most of the theoretical topics become just simply become too difficult beyond uh, beyond high school level. And then it's, it's also very difficult to establish criteria for how accurate your results are unless you have some data or uh, a simulation to compare it to. And in general, stay clear of topics like the possibility of time travel. Uh, the physics, it's supposed to be about physics and it's not supposed to be about science fiction. And the physics gets really, really difficult very, very quickly. It's probably a topic that's beyond both you and the person marking your essay. A uh, somewhat reasonable example might be to create a mathematical model for something like a fan, a fan-driven cart. You could change your model at, when you put on a sale or took off a sale. However, I would highly recommend that you test that model with some experimental data. A survey, uh, well, it's definitely not a survey of your friends to ask how they would do physics. Uh, it's a comparison of alternative viewpoints or models um, so you're looking at literature. You might, uh, a reasonable example might be to discuss alternate models that explain sliding friction. But some of those models get quite difficult and might be beyond your scope. So my recommendation, definitely spend more time developing a good topic and research question. And if you do that, you're going to spend less time writing the essay. And that time will be much more pleasurable. So what are you looking for in a topic? Well, if it's going to be, if your time is going to be pleasurable, it's got to be something that's interesting to you. It's got to be relevant to others. And, uh, and it should be at the right level of challenge. And if, if that's all kind of coming together, there should be a feeling of resonance. Oh, this feels good. This feels right. This fits. And if you're not getting that feeling, you probably need to choose another topic. And then the, uh, the other big question you've got to ask yourself is, is it going to be doable? What resources are you going to need? And are those resources going to be available when you are? Are you going to need supervision? You better talk to your supervisor about that. And just basically, is it going to be within your time, energy, and intellectual limits? If you want to investigate aerodynamics and build a wind tunnel, well, you better have a lot of free time. So you might need to toss away 10 topics before you really find one that resonates. Where do you go for ideas? All the sites below are very good. Uh, this 300 stimulating ideas for IB physics and practical investigations and EE. So I'll do a Google search. You'll find that document. It's quite useful. Some of these sites are geared for 
high school students, so the things they'll be talking about will be at an appropriate level. There are some sample essays as well that you can take a look at right at this link here. And I'd recommend all of these as potential places to kind of scan through and see if you can find an interesting idea for yourself, one that resonates with you. Usually the best essays are based on something every day. So uh, I had a student do a uh, look at the best surface for a board game called Carom. Another essay I saw was about the stability of a canoe. Uh, another essay I saw was about the effect of temperature on a battery. They're, they're very practical things. Their relevancy is obvious. Now this is an extended essay. It's not just a planning lab, so it demands a lot more depth. You're not simply finding the relationship between a dependent variable and one or two independent variables. That might be a good starting point, but you've always got to take it deeper. And usually where's that depth coming from? It comes from examining secondary effects. So for instance, my student that was measuring the mass of Jupiter using the worldwide telescope, his results for the mass were off by a little bit. And so he started examining factors such as the trajectory of the moons not being a circle, but an ellipse. And then he looked at other factors and he considered things like pixel size and if there was any other nearby masses that might affect the motion. And what he actually came up with was a very, very simple conclusion, which was that Jupiter itself was in the theory being assumed to be circular, when in fact it was elliptical. And when he made the correction for that, he got the accepted results to within experimental uncertainty. Now depth might come from and deviations to the theory when the data is beyond a certain range. My student who was doing the game of carom, he noticed that when he put a little bit too much powder on the carom board, that the physics changed because the carom piece would get caught in the thicker powder. And so the powder was no longer assisting the motion, it was interfering with the motion. So it's very important to kind of notice where the physics changes, in what range does the physics stay the same, and where does it begin to change. And in general, in physics, the depth comes from examining these potentially neglected factors. One of the most important tasks that you're going to have is to refine your research question or your topic. So let's look at the example of my student who was measuring the mass of Jupiter using data from the Worldwide Telescope. Now, if he said his topic was simply gravitation, that would obviously be far too broad. He needs to focus his research topic down. Now, if he says it's about gravitational effects on the moons of Jupiter, well, in, in fact, that's not what his essay was about. He was looking for the mass of Jupiter. And so that's unfocused. Now, the next statement, calculating the mass of Jupiter using data from the Worldwide Telescope, he did that originally, and that only took about a, a page of writing. So that really wasn't what his, his topic was about. And as we looked at it more closely, it was really about how precisely can we measure the mass of Jupiter using the Worldwide Telescope. So that's a focused question. It's clear. And for me, I find it a little bit sexy. I think it's, a, it, it, it's an appealing question. I think it draws the reader in. And it's not always possible to do that, but you should always kind of aim for sexy if you can. And ultimately, if you've got a good research question, that research question should guide you as to what you're going to include and not include in the essay. So either, that, and what that means is that everything you put into your essay should in one way or another be part of your answer to your research question. And if it's not part of your answer, it shouldn't be included. Now, as you're writing your essay, be very practical. You want to answer the obvious questions that anyone seeing that research question would ask. For instance, how accurate and precise do you think your results are? That's an important question. What of it, what relevancy does this question have? How is it practical? And then does anyone else have anything to say about this? Did you read any other articles where they did something similar or something related that you can add to your essay? And a few very simple don'ts. Uh, don't explain basic physics. You, you can assume that any of the physics that you do in class, that that's already understood. You don't want to be, be presenting common course material. 
Don't write about the historical development of physics or your personal history with the topic. Don't include too many graphs, data tables, photographs. Include what you think the reader really needs in order to make sense of your essay. Generally, just don't include excessive detail. In particular, with your procedure, procedure just needs to give enough information that somebody else could reproduce the experiment. And always look for papers, and this is very possible to do now with the internet. There's so much stuff out there that's on the internet. So look for other papers or articles that are relevant to your essay, and then if possible, try to compare their results to yours. And one last but important piece of advice, and that is seek feedback. Listen to your supervisor. Ask questions. I had one student, higher level seven, quite easily, went off to Cambridge, but he only got a C on his extended essay. He did a theoretical topic. He did it completely independently and really didn't accept any feedback from me. And I had another student of far, far less ability who scored an A and who responded well to what I said and accepted feedback and I think really got a lot out of the process. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.